Hello. And welcome to Movie Plots Recapped. Today, we are going to explain a multiple Oscar winning movie, Avatar, released in 2009. Watch out! And take care! Movie premises opens in the year 2148 with a man on voiceover talking about his fantasy of flying and being free. Earth's population is approaching 20 billion and its resources fast dwindling, with pollution, starvation, poverty, and conflict. Jake Sully, a former Marine paralyzed from the waist down owing to wounds incurred in combat, is living in a small rundown apartment in a vast metropolis complex. He is compelled to live out his life in a wheelchair because veteran benefits are not enough to pay for his spine surgery, especially in his artificially inflated economy. One night, Jake is enjoying with his friends in a bar. A fight breaks out between Jake and a man when the man strikes a woman. Jake being an ex-army man couldn't tolerate this treatment towards a woman. After breaking up the fight, the bouncers throw Jake out into the street, with one even throwing his wheelchair at him. Jake is approached by two Resources Development Administration, RDA, agents who confirm his identity and inform him that his identical twin brother, Tom Sully, has been killed in a mugging incident. Tom was one of the selected few scientists chosen to participate in the Avatar program. Tom had been trained on Earth for three years to control his avatar for a mission on Pandora. Since Jake is genetically identical to his brother, he can link with Tom's avatar, saving the RDA the cost of creating a new one. Jake agrees to take over his brother's contract and is put in cryosleep for the trip to Pandora. Next, six years later in 2154, the spaceship reaches a place called Pandora. Jack awakens from cryosleep along with hundreds of others who have come to work in the human colony on Pandora. The planet Polyphemus, a gas giant similar to Jupiter, orbits the star Alpha Centauri A and Pandora is its moon. Pandora is similar to Earth with the presence of oxygen and water but because of poison in the atmosphere, humans have to wear masks to survive on the planet. At the RDA facility, known as Hell's Gate, Jake meets Colonel Miles Quaritch, a strong officer responsible for the security of the human colony. Colonel Miles greets the men from Earth and provides a brief about Pandora, explaining that it is a mostly rainforested world filled with wild animals and inhabited by blue-skinned humanoids called the Navi. At the RDA facility, Jake sees the Avatar for the first time and is overjoyed as he feels it resembles his brother Tom. However, scientist Norm Spellman informs Jake that the Avatar looks like him. Jake starts documenting his experiences in video logs. Although Dr. Grace Augustine, head of the Avatar program, gets along well with Spellman, she rebuffs Jake's handshake and tells him that she needs Tom, who was trained for the program, not him. As an experienced botanist, Dr. Grace and her team have extensive knowledge of Pandora's native language and culture. An irritated Dr. Grace tells RDA Administrator Parker Selfridge in the control room that she requires a scientist like Tom, not a retired soldier. But Parker tells her, she has to work with what is available to her. Parker reminds her that blending in with the natives is essential for extracting the valuable unobtainium metal without violence. That is this mining which pays for her research as well. In the following scene, Dr. Spellman and Jake lie down in pods to link with their avatars under Dr. Grace's supervision. As soon as Jake's consciousness is transferred into his avatar body, the avatar comes to life. Excited, Jake, who has been paralyzed for years, stands up and runs outside in his avatar's body. After regaining consciousness in his own body, Colonel Miles recruits Jake as a spy and instructs him to gain the trust of the natives and convince them to leave, so that unobtainium can be extracted without any issue. After several weeks of training, Jake, Grace, and Norm embark on a helicopter journey with retired Marine pilot Trudy Chacon to explore the wildlife of Pandora. Trudy drops them off at their designated locations. They encounter many unusual animals and plants as they traverse the forest. They come across an old and decaying school where Grace used to teach English to the Navi children. Jack notices bullet holes in the walls and asks Grace about it, but she avoids the question without providing an answer. Grace is saddened to see unread books scattered about the school, reminding her of the intelligent Navi kids she used to teach. In the forest, Grace and her colleague come across a tree root with a shiny substance and are ecstatic. She asks her colleague to collect a sample. Jack ventures a little further and encounters a giant creature, 
the hammerhead titanoteres, resembling a rhinoceros. Jake is about to shoot, but Grace stops him, warning that the sound of the shot will agitate the creature. She explains that the creature is merely protecting its territory. After some time, the titanoteres begins to retreat. As Jake looks back, he is confronted by the predator Thanator, a predatory creature. Grace urges Jake to run, and he does, losing many of his weapons in the process. He eventually jumps into a waterfall to escape the Thanator and save his life. Jake leaves the river and ventures into the woods. He crafts a wooden weapon and begins searching for an exit from the forest. Unbeknownst to him, Neytiri, a member of the Navi tribe, is observing his actions. As she aims at Jake with her bow, a wood sprit lands on the arrow, causing Neytiri to reconsider her shot and view it as a good sign. Later, as Jake lights a torch to guide him through the dark night, he is attacked by viper wolves. He struggles to defend himself until Neytiri comes to his aid, killing several viper wolves. However, Neytiri is frustrated with Jake for making her to viper wolves and leaves without speaking to him. Despite her warning, Jake follows her and she expresses her anger at him being a dreamwalker, a hybrid avatar, created by the sky people. But, when many Iowa seeds land on Jake's body, considered pure spirits by the Navi community, Neytiri is shocked and allows Jake to accompany her. As they walk through the bright forest, Neytiri's tribe attempts to attack Jake, but she intervenes, claiming that he has been chosen by the seeds of Iowa. Sute, the strongest fighter in the tribe, orders other fighters to take Jake with them, though Jake is unsure of their destination. In the next scene, Jake is brought before Etukan and Moat, the leaders and parents of Neytiri, in the Omanakaya clan of the Navi community. Chief Etukan is displeased with Jake's presence and questions Neytiri's reason for bringing him there. The Navi refer to hybrid avatars as dream walkers. Neytiri explains the incident of Iwa's seeds landing on Jake's body. Moat, the spiritual leader of the Omatakaya clan, approaches Jake and asks him his purpose for coming. Jake responds that he has come to learn. Moat expresses skepticism, as the Navi has tried teaching dreamwalkers before, but Jake insists that his cup is empty and ready to be filled. The task of teaching Jake is assigned to Neytiri, who reluctantly agrees. Jake begins to live with the Navi people and immerse himself in their culture. As Jake wakes up from the pod, Jake reports his success in establishing contact with the Navi community to Colonel Miles and Parker. They reveal to Jake their plan to remove the community from their land as it contains a large amount of valuable unobtainium beneath the ground. They give Jake a deadline of three months, after which they plan to force the Navi to leave. Throughout his stay, Jake continues to report any information he gathers to Colonel Miles and Parker. Dr. Grace learns of these meetings and arranges a trip for the Avatar team to visit the floating hills of Hallelujah. Upon arrival, the team is amazed by the breathtaking sight and is in awe of what they see, as it is unlike anything they have ever witnessed. As an Avatar, Jake learns to bond with Pandora's flying creatures, the Banshees, and gains the respect of the Navi community. This creates jealousy in Sute, who was supposed to marry Neytiri and is the next in-line leader of the Omatakaya clan. Colonel Miles instructs Jake to convince the clan to leave home tree area, but Jake is now hesitant due to his realization that Miles and Parker's intentions are solely for profit and want to destroy the clan. Jake informs Miles that the clan is holding a ceremony to make him one of their own, and he will attempt to persuade them once he becomes one of them. That night, the ceremony takes place and Etukan officially makes Jake a part of the community. Dr. Grace is also present in the ceremony. With his newfound status, Jake can now mate with anyone he desires within the clan, and he chooses Neytiri. They spend that night mating at the Tree of Voices, and they are now mated for life. Jake and Neytiri are awakened by the sound of bulldozers, which have been sent by the RDA to clear a portion of the forest. To stop the bulldozers, Jake damages one of the camera links. Upon arriving at Home Tree, Jake and Sute get into an argument about Neytiri. Before anything else can happen, the soldiers disconnect the link from Jake and Grace's avatar bodies, causing both of them to awake from their pods. Miles and Parker see the footage of Jake, breaking the camera link, as well as his vlogs. It becomes evident to them that Jake has no intention of getting the Navi to vacate Home Tree. 
Grace tries to convince Parker and Miles that Home Tree is connected to the very life of Pandora and that damaging it will result in the destruction of all life forms on the planet. That very night, Tsute and the other Navi warriors set fire to the RDA bulldozers. The next morning, the RDA discovers that six of their personnel have been killed when the Navi set the RDA bulldozers ablaze. In response, Colonel Miles insists on escorting the Navi out in a peaceful and humane way and Parker agreed with this approach. Grace is deeply saddened by the events and Jake informs Jake that the RDA never cared for the Avatar program. Their only goal is to obtain unobtainium and that is why they have destroyed the sacred site of the Navi community. They are planning to wipe them out. Trudy informs Grace that the RDA has threatened the Navi to vacate home tree or face destruction along with the tree. An enraged Grace confronts Parker, and tries to convince him that it is not right to engage in bloodshed with the Navi. Jake also attempts to convince Parker to give him a chance to persuade the Navi community to vacate the area to which Parker hesitantly agrees. Jake and Grace, using their avatar bodies, go to the Navi, where they start explaining the situation. Jake explains that he was sent by the Sky People, and his purpose to learn their ways was to make them trust him and understand his point of view. He was supposed to convince them to leave the home tree peacefully so that no blood would be shed. Now, if they do not accept the Sky People's demand, he warns them, they will be destroyed. Upon hearing this, everyone considers Jake and Grace as traitors and ties them to the tree. The Navi decide to fight back against the Sky People. Colonel Miles arrives with many military helicopters to attack. A pitched battle ensues between the Navi and the RDA. At first, Miles uses tear gas to scare Navi off, but when the Navi responds with arrows, he orders the attack with bullets and missiles. Many Navis are killed in the attack. Mode unties Jake and Grace and tells Jake to help them if he truly is one of them. The whole forest is burning, and the Navis are dying. Trudy, who witnesses the violence caused by them, turns her copter back, stating that she did not come there to cause bloodshed. Home Tree is devastated by bombing and fires, with some Navi escaping on banshees. Seeing Home Tree fall, all the Navi begin to howl and cry loudly. Their pain and anger are clearly visible on their faces. Meanwhile, a sharp piece of wood hits Chief Atukan during battle and he is laying down dead. Neytiri starts crying loudly upon seeing her father's condition. Jake tries to comfort Neytiri, but she tells him to leave forever. Seeing all this, Colonel Miles feels proud of himself and orders the pilot to return to base. In the stampede, Parker instructs the soldiers to release Jake and Grace from their avatar bodies. Despite Norm's efforts, they are all arrested and held in a room. Turdy, pretending to bring food, frees them but while escaping, their helicopter is shot at by Colonel Miles. Grace is hit by a bullet, but Jake and Norm escape to the containers containing avatar pods in the mountains. Norman helps Jake link with his avatar body, and Jake awakes in his avatar form. He walks to the burnt home tree, contemplating how he will face the Navi after everything that has happened. Suddenly, his pet banshee arrives and he hops on, soaring into the sky. While flying, Jake spots a giant great Leonopteryx and jumps onto it, making it his mount. He becomes the sixth Toruk Makto, a legendary figure in Navi history who has ridden the great Leonopteryx. The Navi gather around the Tree of Spirits, praying as they see the great Leonopteryx flying in the sky with Jake on board. The Leonopteryx lands on Earth and the Navi become restless. Everyone begins to fear Jake, as riding a Leonopteryx is a significant accomplishment. Neytiri approaches Jake, revealing she was scared for her people, but now her fear is gone. Jake touches Neytiri with affection and they both reaffirm their feelings for each other. Jake informs Tsute that he considers him a great warrior and that without his support, he cannot win the war with the Sky People. Tsute recognizes Jake as Toruk Makdo and promises to join the fight. Jake pleads with Mote to save Grace as her condition deteriorates. At the Tree of Spirit, Mote tries to transfer Grace's soul permanently into her avatar, but it's too late. Before she dies, Grace tells Jake that Iwa is real, as she has seen it. With Jake, Sute who is now the clan leader, make a plan to fight the humans. Jake says that all the clans of Pandora must unite and attack the Sky People altogether if they hope to win the war. Jake, accompanied by Neytiri and Sute, 
gives a powerful speech to the Navi, filling their hearts with courage. The Navi prepare for battle as the atmosphere shifts with Jake's call. The faces of those, once filled with pain and grief, now show enthusiasm and passion. Jake and Neytiri lead the Navi aboard the great Leonopteryx, while the rest ride out on their banshees to defend their land. The Horse Clan and Urkan Clan of the Eastern Sea join Jake. All other clans also respond to Toruk Makto's call. Colonel Miles becomes aware of the gathering of all the clans near the Tree of Souls. He senses danger and decides to destroy the clans and their holy place once and for all. Jake's spy in Miles' camp, informs them that they will be attacked at 6 o'clock in the morning and that Colonel Miles will use full force with daisy cutter bombs. Miles plans to destroy the Tree of Spirits, hoping to crush the Navi's hope and force them to accept defeat. Jake appeals to Iowa to accompany him, saying that if Grace is with her in the afterworld, she sees in her memories, where they have come from. She can see, a world without greenery, where people like Miles have destroyed Mother Nature. He fears that Miles will do the same to Pandora. Neytiri, however, reminds Jake that Iowa does not support anyone, but only protects the balance of life. As the attack begins, Jake and the other clans respond. Miles leads his soldiers, wearing AMP suits, to climb the Tree of Souls, with helicopters in the sky. A fierce battle ensues, with the Navi riding their banshees to attack the helicopters. Both sides suffer heavy damage. Sute gets injured and falls, Norm's avatar gets shot and he returns to his real body to continue fighting. Neytiri's banshee gets hurt and she falls, surrounded by enemies. A group of Titanitares comes to save her and attack the enemy. The Titanitares and the Thanator also join the battle on the side of the Navi. The Thanator bows to Neytiri and offers her a ride. Neytiri bonds with the Thanator and they ride into battle. Jake destroys Miles' main aircraft, filled with bombs, but Miles survives and enters an AMP suit to continue fighting. By chance, Miles captures Jake's pod and plans to destroy his body. Neytiri, riding the Thanator, stops Miles by attacking him. Miles kills the Thanator and is about to kill Neytiri, but, Jake arrives to fight him. Jake destroys the life support in Miles' AMP suit, but gets trapped in Miles' grip. Just as Miles is about to finish Jake, Neytiri shoots Miles with arrows one after another and kills him. Jake's link with the Avatar breaks, and he starts to suffer in the pod until Neytiri saves him by reconnecting life support to him. Neytiri sees Jake's real body for the first time. The war ends with the death of Colonel Miles. Jake returns to his Avatar form and reaches Tsute, who is lying wounded on the ground, close to his last breath. Sute hands Jake his dagger and tells him to release him from his pain and lead the Navi, as it is the right thing to do. Sute expresses pride in having fought alongside Toruk Makdo and considers Jake his brother. Jake then mercifully releases Sute from his pain. Jake mourns for Sute as he closes his eyes. At the end of the movie, the humans are sent back to Earth as punishment but those who support Jake and the Navi choose to stay on Pandora. Jake begins a new life as the leader of the Navi, now permanently in his avatar form. This is how the movie ends, so, what do you think about the movie, write in the comments below. If you like the movie, support us by subscribing to our channel, like the video and leave a comment. It helps. Thanks, see you next time.